Hi, everybody. Hi. I am so grateful to have this chance to speak with you tonight. I want to talk about the law of attraction, which isn't a religion, although it saved me. And it's also called the universal manager, so it has a spiritual aspect. And I, it goes by LOA, Law of Attraction, and I have a cartoon strip <coughs> about it. And my cartoons are available at riverville.com, my cartoon website. So, <coughs> the Law of Attraction states that that which is like unto itself is drawn. And actually, it organizes our experience here on Earth. It's pretty cool how it works. It's an impersonal law, just like the law of gravity. The law of gravity doesn't care who threw the ball up in the air. It will come down. The law of attraction doesn't care what you focus on. You will get more of it. So whatever you focus on, you're going to get more of. And it responds to your feelings. And thought also false feelings. If it could talk, it might say, well, she's focused on feeling good. Let's give her more things to feel good about. That's how it works. I was raised in what I call poverty consciousness. Poverty consciousness teaches that you have to work hard for everything you get, and even then you might not get it, and there's not enough to go around. Well, the opposite of poverty consciousness is called prosperity consciousness. And prosperity can apply <coughs> to health, relationships, and finances. <coughs> it's not just finances. It's also a health and relationship. And prosperity consciousness says that this is an abundant universe and you can have whatever you want. There is more than enough to go around. And by asking, you actually help the universe to expand. You help the universe expand by having fabulous wants. Now, it's said that we choose to be born into this world of contrast so that we can have preferences. <coughs> contrast is anything that shows up in your life that you don't like or you didn't ask for, you wouldn't have wanted. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Like I have an example. Say I have mice in my house and then I get rid of them. Well, I'll sit around and go, oh, it is so great not to have mice anymore. But if I'd never had mice, then I wouldn't ever think about how great it is not to have them. So contrast gives, makes the removal of it sweeter and more delicious <coughs> than it would have been without it. And supposedly contrast has its place in the scheme of things. For one thing, we're always having preferences about what we want. <coughs> if I'm cold, I want to be warmer. If I'm hungry, I want to get something to eat. And if someone's not nice to me, I want more kindness. So we're all coming up with preferences every minute of every day. We're having preferences. And in the Bible it says, ask and it is given. Well, if that's true, where's my stuff? But the fact is, it's given on a frequency and vibratory realm. So your inner being, also known as your higher self, immediately begins to enjoy those things you've asked for in the realm of the non-physical. And the way that you get it to show up in your life is that you raise your frequency to be a match for that which you've asked for. <coughs> and the way to do that is to do, give thanks in advance for having received it and to do a happy dance. It's here, yay! Now this chart here is a uh, emotional set point list. The high, the top one, the highest frequency, joy, love, also includes appreciation and gratitude. <coughs> Those are the highest frequencies. <coughs> when you are running that kind of energy, you are connected to source, great creator, God, universe, whatever you want to call it. And that's where your inner being hangs out. The lower frequencies are um, the things that don't feel so good. And if you're doing stuff that feels good, you are on your path. Good is good. 
Not fit is not fit. It's as simple as that. So I'm just going to ask you to change the way you think about things just a little bit. I think all of you actually know this information on <coughs> some level, and I'm just here as a reminder person. So if you take a moment and think about something you really want. Anybody think it's something you really want? Maybe you want it for a while. Everybody have, everybody have something you really want in mind? Now, <coughs> imagine what it would feel like to have that thing that you really want. What would it taste like? What would it smell like? What would it sound like? What would it look like? And run that feeling of having that thing that you really want. Supposedly, if you do that for 17 seconds four times a day, it cannot be denied to you. It will show up in your experience. And that's how, that's how, it, that's how you manifest stuff that you want in this physical plane. Mind you, it's already waiting for you in vibratory escrow. Everything you've ever asked for is amassed in, a, in the frequency realm, range, in the realm of frequency. And then your work is to let it into your experience by getting happy in advance, by running those high frequency emotions, gratitude and appreciation, by doing a happy dance that it showed up, by, well, there's a lot of different ways to manifest, but those are some of them. That way you can get anything you want. And also, don't take score too soon. Don't say, why isn't it here yet? You need to make peace with where you're at right now because anything you're not at peace with is active in your energy field. And it will be a form of resistance to that good that's trying to come in. So make peace with where you are right now and then put your focus on those things that you want, as if they're already here. And that's the little change in the thinking. You take your focus off what is, and you put it on what you want. And that's how you attract it into your life. It's pretty neat how it works. And I want to give a couple examples. Uh, when I was moving from Michigan back to the West Coast, I needed to sell my 15-foot outboard motor aluminum boat. And so I lived on a, on a dead-end street, got maybe five vehicles down in a day. I parked my boat on a trailer in front of the river <coughs> that I lived on, and I put a sign with my phone number for sale. And then every time I thought about the boat, <coughs> I engendered a happy feeling that it had sold. Yay! It's sold! Yes! So I thought about that when I left my driveway, when I came home, and when I was at work. And I just fabricated that feeling out of thin air. I didn't let my think, myself think, oh no, what if it doesn't sell? That's an albatross around my neck. What am I going to do? I didn't go there. I just was, yes, it's sold. It took two weeks. Then, going cross country, I was in Wyoming. I had driven for an hour too long that day. I had to stop and get a motel. And I happened to be in a town where they were having an oil field boom and all the rooms were taken. I went to three motels and there were no rooms. And I started, I walked back to my car and started to cry. What am I gonna do? And I thought, wait a minute, I know how to manifest. And I said, I got it, I got it. I said, be more specific. I got a room, I got a room. So I went to another motel and I stood in line, and a woman behind the desk said, can we help you? And I said, I need a room. She said, I'm sorry, every room is, and the man standing next to her said, I just had a cancellation. <laughs> so I changed my energy on the subject of getting a room. I went from, oh no, I'll never get one, to I got it already. I gave thanks in advance, I changed my energy, that plugged me into the timeline of receiving that which I had asked for. Because by changing my energy around what I wanted, it made it possible for it to come into my experience. I lined up my frequency with that with, that I was asking for. That's the key to manifesting. 
and it's not so very difficult. It takes a little bit of, you know, energy, but are worth doing do, but it's not so very, very difficult. So I have some manifesting tips and tools and things to accelerate the process. Anything that you expect is on its way to you. Make sure that you expect good things because they're, they're, on, they're on their way to you. And let's see what else. Keep a book of positive aspects. Think about things that make you uh, feel good. Uh, count up the blessings in your life. Like recently I've had some, um, some pain, but my pain will go away faster if I think about what's going right. If I take my attention off what's going wrong and think about what's going right, I'll feel better sooner. Then uh, other things you can do are, um, well, the, my very favorite one is find something to be happy about. Just find something to be happy about. You're going to have a good life if you do that. This list is useful because if you find yourself one of the lower frequency emotions, you can incrementally work your way up to a higher one. And each one gets relief from the one directly below it. So if you go from insecurity to doubt, it will feel like joy. You don't have to go all the way to joy to have the experience of joy. Well, the first time I saw this list, I went, oh my god, I've spent my entire life vibrating at disappointment, which is number 12. 12. I remember when I was four years old, and I decided, you know what, I've been so disappointed up until now, I might as well just expect it. <coughs> well, that disappointment is a particularly dangerous one to get stuck at because people will line up around the block to deliver that to you <coughs> if that's where you're vibrating. And they think it's what you want because that's what you're putting out asking to have come back. Law of attraction will deliver it. I'm focused on disappointment. Let's give her some disappointment. It doesn't ask, is that good for her? It just says, that's where she's focused. That must be what she wants. And finally, by looking at that list, I released my need to be disappointed, and I intended something better for myself. And I got that. I let, let go of the disappointment. Now, I had a girlfriend who lived in overwhelmment. She went through her whole life feeling overwhelmed. She had an irritating roommate, and that gave her relief from always feeling overwhelmed. Because irritation is right above overwhelmment on the list. So that's how the list can be useful for uh, incrementally <coughs> working your way up out of wherever you might find yourself to be stuck. And I think a full life one feels all these things at some point. The trick is just not to get stuck in the lower ones because they're a point of attraction and they're not good ones. So spend as much time as you can in gratitude, appreciation, love and joy, and you're going to have a good life. It's as simple as that. And if you uh, also make peace with where you're at, if you have a tendency to wear a chip on your shoulder, take it off. Stop complaining if things aren't going well. And find things to be happy and grateful for. And that will really help you out. Thank you. <laughs>